Hello and welcome back. My name is Nathan House and I am with the Houston Church of Christ in Houston, California. We're going to begin actually looking at the book of Psalms. And so we're not going to try to look at every single Psalm individually. That would just take a long, too much time, I think. But we're going to look at some selected Psalms. And so uh, I'm going to introduce the book of Psalms a little bit today. This is not intended to be some sort of a complete, thorough introduction, but it is intended to introduce you at least a little bit to the book. And we'll look at a few uh, things concerning that introduction and authorship and things like that. So the book of Psalms, as we call it in English, again, the English title comes from the Greek word psalmos, which means song. But the Hebrew title in the Hebrew Bible is tehillim, um, and that means praises. So we have, again, a title that represents more, more the Greek text than it does the original Hebrew language. The authors of the Psalms, now this one is kind of interesting. When you're looking at the book of Psalms, there's many authors, and we don't know who all the authors to every Psalms, to every one of the Psalms was. We know that David wrote the majority of them. You know, so David, of course, was you know, well known for being the author of numerous Psalms, and but there's others listed as well. You can see some of these on the list, and we'll look at this in a moment. Sons of Korah, Asaph, Solomon, Moses. But again, there was others as well. What I want to do is I want you to see ultimately, though, that the Bible, the New Testament writers attribute this work. While they were done by man, they were written by men, the Bible, the New Testament attributes these works from the book of Psalms to God. You know, uh, there are there are people today who still don't, you know, Jews today, even some people who claim to be Christians, who still only hold to the first five books of the Old, of the Old Testament. I was, in fact, talking with a gentleman years ago um, who denied the inspiration of the Old Testament, except for those first five books. Um, and he did, didn't like particularly what I tried to show him from the scriptures that I'm going to share with you at this time. But first of all, we're going to notice that these Psalms are attributed to the Holy Spirit specifically and to God specifically. Let's look at a couple of those texts. So let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 16. Acts chapter 1, verse 16. So it says, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled. So Peter is speaking. This is again after Jesus Christ has ascended into heaven. Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke. So he, first of all, Peter calls what he's going to be quoting scriptures. He says the Holy Spirit spoke it beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas. So David, who was king, you know, roughly a thousand years before Christ, David wrote this concerning Judas. Well, how did he do that? Because the Holy Spirit spoke through David. So then we come down here and we can see, it says, verse 20, for it is written in the book of Psalms. So all of these things are all important things to note. Again, Peter calls it scripture. Peter says the Holy Spirit spoke it. How did he do it? Through David. So we see this idea of inspiration. We see that this was written concerning Judas. Again, he identifies the book for us as Psalms. And if you if you have cross references in your Bible, it'll tell you right where this text is taken from. Psalm sixty nine verse twenty five. Might may his camp become desolate. Let there be another one to dwell in it. But then he quotes a second psalm as well. Psalm one o nine verse eight. Let another take his office. So again, notice this very important uh, point here. The Peter, the apostle Peter, attributes these texts from Psalms to David, but ultimately, more importantly, to the Holy Spirit. Now turn to chapter 4 of Acts and look at verse 25. And again, just to give you a little bit of background, um, Peter and John had been um, arrested in the, in the temple for healing somebody and for teaching about Jesus Christ. Then the church comes together and they're actually praising God. They're not complaining. They're, they're praising God. And it says, and when they were released, they went to their friends. Peter and John were released. They reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard it, the church, these, these brothers and sisters, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so pause for a second. When they heard it, I believe that they is referring to the church as a whole, Again, the apostles are there. So this is kind of an interesting text, okay? Because the who is who is speaking here? It seems to be the church to me. Now, maybe you may argue it's Peter and John. 
But whatever the case, it says when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God. And But again, look at what they attribute here. Uh, they say, again, it was spoken through the mouth of your father David, by the Holy Spirit. And then again, it quotes a psalm, Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And the fact that this text, I'm sorry, the fact that this prayer was something God heard and was pleased with is pretty evident because verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. But again, what we see here is that they attribute this Psalm chapter 2 to David, through to the Holy Spirit. And we'll see Psalm chapter 2 is attributed uh, to the Holy Spirit again in another text as well. So let's go back to our screen for a second. So we see the author of Psalms uh, in the book of Acts tri attributed to the Holy Spirit. Now go to the book of Hebrews. If you have your Bible, you can turn there or you can follow along on the screen. In fact, let me go ahead and put that on the screen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. So the Hebrew writer is making a point, the superiority of Jesus Christ. And the Hebrew writer says, to which of the angels did God ever say? So the Hebrew writer attributes this saying to God. Well, where does this saying come from? Well, notice where it comes from. It says, look at this, Psalm 2, verse 7. So the text that I just read for you in the book of Acts, chapter 4, they attributed that was Psalm 2. They were attributing to God, through, actually to the Holy Spirit, through, the, through David. So here the angels say, God said this. Well, when did God say this? You are my son. Today I have begotten you. He said it in Psalm 2, verse 7. Look at this. Or again, here's another Psalm, a quote from Psalm. This is Psalm 89, 26 and 27. This is again attributed to God. And again, um, uh, okay, so this one is from Deuteronomy. But over and over, he quotes the book of Psalms. And again, quoting all the other Old Testament passages is significant as well, but that's not the point of today's lesson. But he, again, attributes these, these texts over and over, these psalms, to God. When did God say this? But of the Son, of the Son, he, talking about God, says, again, notice this text, Psalm 45, 6, and 7. Um, and so you, again, see all of these things. So look at another text. So the authors, again, the psalms are, are attributed to the Holy Spirit, to God. Now, David and these men were mouthpieces of the Holy Spirit. They were mouthpieces of God. So let's look at, and, I, and again, you see it that I said there's others. I'm only giving you a couple, but go to chapter four of the book of Hebrews as well. And look again here at this text. So again, the Hebrew writer says, for we who have believed enters that rest as he said. And if you go back and read, who is the he? Or you can go down here and read the he is talking about God. God said, I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. And again, notice where this is quoted from, Psalm 95. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but the point here is this. The book of Psalms is New Testament writers, New Testament apostles attribute the work of Psalms to the Holy Spirit, attribute the work of Psalms to God. Now, these men were mouthpieces. And I'm going to share with you a, 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 an image. Um, this is taken from, uh, Faith Life from Logos Software. Uh, I'm going to move myself off the screen for a minute. Uh, but this image shows you, you know, they've done their best to try to show you who has written the different Psalms. And, and sometimes they're just not sure who wrote it. We have some anonymous ones down here. But we see Solomon and Moses and uh, Asaph and David and Korhites. And so, again, it's interesting, interesting to note who wrote these. And, and so, again, you ask questions, perhaps, Okay, so who was Korah? Who was Asaph? We know who Solomon was. We know who Moses was. Um, but who were these men? So real quickly, we're going to look at a couple of these texts where it talks about who David was. Again, you know who David was. But I'm still going to show you something about that. And then we'll look at this text from 1 Chronicles 6 as well. So let's look at 2 Samuel 23, first of all, verse 1. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who, raised, who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob. Look at all these great things they're saying about David. But look at this next thing. The sweet psalmist of Israel. So David here in, in 2 Samuel 23, 1, is called the sweet psalmist of Israel. And then so look at 1 Chronicles 
And again, notice that these are the men. So this is going to give a list of men who were appointed by David in service. Uh, David didn't build the temple. His son built, was going to build the temple. But David prepared all of these things for the temple service. And David prepared all these things for the building of the temple. And so, so, so it says in chapter 1 Chronicles 6, 31, These are the men whom David put in charge of the service of song in the house of the Lord after the ark rested there. They ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And they performed their service according to their order. So again, David didn't build the temple. David prepared his son Solomon to do so. But then it says, these are the men who served and their sons of the sons of the Kohathites. So the Kohathites were um, descendants from, if you look here, from, from Levi, from the tribe of Levi. And then look at verse 39. So here's the Kohathites who, who again, wrote some of the Psalms. Uh, and his brother Asaph, who stood on his right hand, namely Asaph, the son of Barakai, son of Shimei. So when we look at who were some of the authors, we see some of these, the sons of Korah, Asaph, Solomon. Uh, and these, men's were, these men were appointed, some of them by David, some of them were uh, preceded David, some of them came after the uh, Babylonian captivity, it seems. Um, and again, notice this beautiful psalm, Psalm 42, right? The, you know, as the deer, that's, that's, a psalm, that's a psalm from the sons of Korah. Um, and great, some great psalms. And Asaph, we're going to look at one of his psalm, uh, one of their, his psalms in just a moment. So again, continuing our introduction of the Book of Psalms, the Book of Psalms is divided into five books. It's kind of interesting because if you look at the Book of Psalms, uh, if you look at these, and if you look at the books, as each book comes to an end, you see a doxology, and a doxology is a little—I uh, always call it a little burst of praise. Um, and so. Just real quickly, I'm not going to go through all of these, but here is the here is the ending of book one. So here's book one ending, book two starting. And you'll notice as book one comes to an end, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. So that's the end of book one. If we come to the end of book two, look at Psalm 72 here. What are we, what are we going to see? We're going to see once again a doxology. A little burst of praise. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So again, kind of interesting to note that there are five books. Uh, each book ends with this doxology. And, and again, another aspect of the book of Psalms that we have to remember as, is that they are poetry. Because they are poetry, they're very figurative. And figurative language is powerful language. Um, not only is this highly figurative, it's also very emotional. The author, the author is intending for you to feel his emotion as he writes this. When he talks about in Psalm chapter 1, you know, we're, we're like a tree. Very great image, right? You know, this idea of being like a tree, planted by water. He talks about in Psalm 23, one of the most beloved psalms in all of Scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. And so, these are highly figurative. They're very emotional. And so again, I want to show you another text from Psalm 73, which is a psalm of Asaph. And I want you just to see how this emotion, it becomes very evident. I'm going to again take myself off the screen for a moment. I'm, I, I'm sorry, Psalm 39. We'll look at Psalm, uh, we're not looking at Psalm 73 today. Psalm 39. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with the muzzle. So long as the wicked are in my presence, I was mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail, and my distress grew worse. Hang on. Right when you're trying to do it. Lawn mowing. All right, verse, verse 3. My heart became hot within me. As I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. O Lord, make me know my end. What is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting I am. It's very emotional. He continues. We skipped over a few verses, but he continues in verse 7. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open. So all of this is a very emotional. Verse 10, remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. Verse 12, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. And again, all through this, we see the emotion of the psalmist as he writes this. 
And so the book of Psalms are figurative writings. They're poetry. They're figurative. They're emotional. Um, and again, there's various types of Psalms. Uh, as again, most of us are, if not all of us are familiar with this aspect, that, but the Psalms are very, you know, they're, they're broken up by categories and different people, ha, you know, organize them differently. Remove myself again. But here are some pretty basic ways of organizing uh, the Psalm or looking at their, their type of literature that they are. We have Psalms of praise, Psalms of lament. So the one that I just read for you, we looked at a moment of that moment ago was a Psalm of lament. So royal Psalms that talk about the king and these are interesting to look at because Psalm, Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 are both applied, Psalm 89, are all applied uh, by the Hebrew writer to Jesus Christ. So they're royal as they talk about the king of Judah, the king of Israel, but they're also royal because some of them point directly to Jesus Christ. We have Psalms of wisdom and thanksgiving. And so, again, interesting to stop and to look at the types of Psalms and to consider when you're reading a psalm, what type of psalm am I reading? And sometimes it seems to be, you know, a psalm of lament, but there's trust in it. And so there's no hard, fast rule. And again, every person might come to a little bit of a different answer on some of those. Um, last thing we're going to look at real quickly. So here is this little tiny psalm, Psalm 117. And I want to just kind of show this to you. It's kind of interesting. So we have here two types of poetry. We have, oh, sorry. We have, uh, this is called um, synonymous poetry. So the blue are saying essentially the same things. They're saying, you know, it's, they're synonyms. The green are saying essentially the same things. So this is called synonymous Hebrew, par this is Hebrew parallelism, synonymous poetry, praise the Lord, extol him. Who? All nations, all people. So these two phrases are essentially saying the same thing. Verse 2, then, is a different kind of parallelism. This is synthetic parallelism, where the lines don't say the same things. In fact, instead of saying the same things, they actually add something. They add So each line kind of gives a little bit more uh, information, a little more to you, for uh, to the reader to consider. So praise the Lord, extol Him. Well, why? For, here's the reason you should do these things. Great is His steadfast love toward us. Is that a reason to praise God? Is that a reason to praise God? Because that He, because His love towards us is great? That is a wonderful reason to praise the Lord. And by the way, praise the Lord. What is that Hebrew word? You know that Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what hallelujah means. Why should we cry hallelujah? Why should we say praise the Lord? Because great is His love toward us. But not only that, because this is synthetic parallelism. It adds more information, more reasoning. Why else should I praise the Lord? Because the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Because his faithfulness is not going to, we're never going to come to a point where God's faithfulness stops. We might abandon God. We may turn our back on God, but God, God is always there. And so why should we praise him? And again, he ends the psalm in the same way he begins it. Praise the Lord. Well, why? Who should praise him? All nations, all people. Why should they praise him? Because his, love, because his love toward us is great. Why else should we praise him? Because his faithfulness endures forever. Anyways, uh, this has just been a brief introduction of the book of Psalms, and we will begin looking at some specific Psalms next time. You guys have a great day, and let's praise the Lord. God bless.